So the anthems have been played. You come to West Germany in the light of recent world history. You hear your anthem played without any intention of being modern. You try very hard not to have goosebumps. Throughout the playing of the anthem, you may have noticed that the champion stared fixedly at the challenger. This bout will be scored under the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. It will be won or lost on rounds won or lost. If the rounds turn out to be even, a supplementary one to four point system is in effect per round. You cannot lose on a foul. The mandatory eight count is in effect in a knockdown. There's no saving by the bell except after the 15th round when indeed the fight is over. There are no three knockdowns in one round. A man is automatically out. And now the introductions which are being delivered in the background by the ring announcer Eric Schoheim. Not Eric Strohan, as in the old movie star. Goldenberger is introduced. Presumably, the announcer is to make the introductions in both German and English. That remains to be seen. will be Angie Dundee, along with Ricky Ricky, a gentleman of whom you may not have heard, who is widely regarded as one of the most knowledgeable men in boxing. The key man in the challenges corner will be Wolfgang Mueller, his manager. The judges will be Nat Fleischer, Mr. Boxing in America, editor, editor and publisher of Ring Magazine, along with a German gentleman, Felix Olaf, from the city of Cologne. Teddy Waltham is the referee just introduced. Teddy Waltham, secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control. But that is the man who ended the fight in quotes in Lewiston, Maine. Jersey Joe Walcott went over to him in massive confusion. Nat was sitting next to the timekeeper and told him the fight was over. The count had probably reached about 20 by that time. There's the champion, flexing the neck, the head, as always he does. The champion in white trunks with red stripes and the challenger in white trunks with black stripes. There will be two timekeepers, by the way, for this fight, by request of Angie Dundee. The contestants have been checked for stimulants by request of Angie Dundee taking every possible safeguard against an alleged home country decision. Angie is a curious man. He is quite possibly the most apparently naive, but completely sophisticatedly knowledgeable man in the history of boxing. And now just called up for an introduction, the gentleman whom you met earlier, Max Schmeller. Max, who saw something in 1936, and indeed he did. And now, the gentleman who is a legend in his time. Joe went to Berlin yesterday, went through the wall. I was told by Barney Nagler, one of America's most respected boxing writers, that over in East Germany, because Barney went with him, it was unbelievable. The people mobbed him even there. And now, you'll remember, the man who won the heavyweight championship at Yankee Stadium in 1959, Ingemar Johansson. He's coming up now into the ring from the far corner, as you can see. Debonair, indeed impeccable in his 
black double-breasted jacket. Bobby Schultz has just been introduced. Gustav Schultz. In his day, one of the best German fighters ever. Bubby has just come into the ring, and you're not on camera now. Heine Tenhoff, former German heavyweight, shaking hands with Melvin Berger. There's Bubby now coming out right over us. We're going to be ready for the start of action in just a couple of seconds. There's the bell, we're ready for action. thought he might come out and go right at Mildenberger more than he has thus far. what you would describe as torrid. That pawing right of Mildenberg's did nothing, didn't reach the champion. Notice that the challenger is not truly in a southpaw stance. The right foot is forward, but the arms, the body held squarely, much like Patterson without the peekaboo stance. A little more than halfway through round one. what Mildenberger must look out for, that quick, straight right. He leaves himself wide open for it. There it is again. You can expect the champion to be using that straight right for as long as this fight may last. He has trained diligently with it. Also, look for a quick left, right-left-right combination. Three punches in a row, the left hook supposedly the most effective against the South. We are about 30 seconds away from round one. See that? That's the right. He is wide open for it after his lead. Champion is going after him. There's no question about it. Well, that's the end of round one. At the champion's last training session, I noted that he was sparring against southpaws and practicing moving to the right. I asked him to comment. Some fighting the southpaws, how we and I have to uh, change every once in a while. He's a left-handed fighter. My tackle and approach and my tricks and my traps will have to be different. So uh, I have two left-handed sparring partners here. And that's the reason you see me moving the opposite direction on them. Well, I think moving to the right is the best for Southpaw. Uh, I don't move to the right all the time, only when I'm confusing him. The switch up is the thing that uh, confuses the Southpaw. That was the champion at his last training session. 
We're 10 seconds away from the beginning of round two. There's been a lot of publicity that the champion really is out to get the challenger quickly. It appears so to me. That's why I said earlier he would, I thought he would start more quickly than indeed he had. the champion. In one minute and ten seconds into round two. There is no fear in Mildenberger and he again got in another good shot. moment the champion is a little bewildered by that southpaw style the challenge's right is not is a pawing jab but is not a strong jab so it may seem to be landing more effectively than in fact it is One minute to the end of round two. Remember in the pre-fight interview, the champion said the style might trouble him for three or four rounds. It is definitely giving him trouble in this one. Challenger is open for those straight right and on occasion left. we begin round three a quick glance at most of the score cards around this reporter show that they gave both rounds thus far to the champion the last round very closely on the supplemental point system protects his face well he's very concerned about you'll never see him hit to the opponent's body because he won't lower that bar to protect his face Hildenberger is chasing him well here but not really connecting as the roars of the crowd might lead you to believe one minute gone of round three that he leaves himself open for. A dangerous thing to do. On the other hand, it's up to Muhammad Ali to dispel once and for all the notion that he can punch. Quick 
right jab by Mildenberg. The left hook came in there. That time he hurt Ali. One minute to go, round three. He hurt him, he came in after him, and he got slugged himself. To the left, and the right, and the left. I'll tell you this, Ali's not playing with this man. Not at all. Quickly, let me get Joe Lewis in here. Are you surprised, Joe? I'm surprised that, that it was a good fight because of uh, I don't know, uh, I always say that he had a change, but Clay seemed to be that when he wanted to start father, he's he a much better fighter when he's going father than going back there. As Joe was talking, you saw the champion come back with a series of good straight left and right. Start round four, both scored that last round even. On a 65 degree night here in Frankfurt, West Germany, it has begun to rain. And the champion is beginning to dance more and more as his respect grows for the German challenge. <laughs> Nolan Berger is working very well with the champion's stomach and there hurt him. This fight must be surprising. A lot of... Uh, Dugout experts in America. Don't forget, right after this fight coming up, direct from Waco, Texas, the Orange Men of Syracuse against the Bears of Baylor, the opportunity to see Floyd Little, number 44, likely Heisman Trophy winner in his very first game of the college football season. that Ali has been saying he's concerned about a southpaw. He may not have been just building up the belt. A right jab keeps pawing away at the champion. One minute to go in round four. shot to the champion's face. The right paw again. Champion holding momentarily in the corner. Again, the right to the champion's face. Level two straight lefts and a quick right, two more left. Puffiness is beginning to show under each eye of the challenger. That's the end of round four as we focus on Carl Mildenberger coming to his corner, who is putting up a much, much better fight than anybody had any reason to anticipate. He is at the same time quite possibly disclosing weaknesses of Muhammad Ali's that nobody ever thought existed. Joe Lewis, come in here if you will. Well, uh, what if a good fight? I'm sure that uh, everyone who said that no going go one round or two rounds uh, uh, really is saying that he put up a great fight. Angie Dundee is talking to the champion right now in the corner. Angie told me just before the fight 
that the champion was going to go at Milton Berger very quickly. We saw that toward the end of the first round, he did go at him, and he won that round convincingly. He probably won the second round, but since then, the fight has been of a different nature. Fifth round underway. The syndicated columnist of the New York Post, Milton Gross, has just joined us at ringside, and we'll be bringing him in for some quick analysis after one of the next two rounds. champion continues to circle in this bout, mainly to the right. Just doesn't make sense. That, of course, is the Mildenberger technique. Maybe that's what he thought he saw. A couple of quick right jams, bend the head, come in with the left to the body. Minute and a half gone of round five. This fight begins to show evidence of going 15. You can be sure, as Angie Dundee bluntly stated before the fight, they'll be worrying his corner. A good left by Mildenberger to the clay head. right after the end of Wide World of Sports from Waco, Texas, the Orange Men of Syracuse against the Bale of Bay. Hildenberger is carrying the fight at this point. There is no sign of bravado in the champion in his personal behavior as there was in the Patterson fight, the Chavalo fight, the London fight. In round six, the end of the last round, you must have seen. The champion clawed the challenger. Challenger's right eye severely cut and bleeding at the moment. Now, of course, it's been closed up. The left eye badly bruised. Angie Dundee at the intermission while we broke for the commercial called over to me, said, Howard, this, and he held up the sixth round. He said the champion will knock him out in this round. That's what Dundee said. It has to be done in the ring. can see is cut and bleeding the right eye of the challenger again the champion is using the straight left and the straight right to get at it he is now pulling occasionally at the blood and there's the right again Nothing like the blood that showed in Henry Cooper in the same sixth round, however. It is now dripping down his chest, as you can see. Always a gory sight. A minute and a half to go in this sixth round. Now the champion is working methodically. Wolfgang Mueller exhorting Mildenberger from the corner.
minute 10 seconds left and this the sixth round there's no quitting this challenge now the left eye is cut his vulnerability to that straight right and straight left has been his undoing. There are only 20 seconds left of this round. And as Max Schmeling just said, the challenger is now getting a terrible beating, or at least was last round, and in the latter half of the round previous. Cuts under both eyes have been closed, but they are susceptible of immediate reopening. And don't forget, too, right after Wide World of Sports, the NCAA game from Waco, Texas, Syracuse against Bell, Lloyd Little and Terry Southwick. Funny thing, Mildenberger has been a steady aggressor in this fight in terms of move, but not in terms of punishment administered. Champion has not reopened those cuts. Hildenberger is not a bleeder of the Cooper Elk, that's for sure. Those clawing rights, that was a good left. Those clawing rights have little effect other than to move the champion back which at this point, I guess, is enough. There's that right again. Cuts open now. Just a glancing blow. The champion slipped it. The cut is open again and bleeding profusely. Cut under the right eye. Mildenberger is lucky in one respect. The cut is beneath the eye, not above it. If it were above it, he would have been long since blinded and not able to continue the battle. Good left to the side of the champion's head.
bring the guard down so he can come through with the left. Angie Dundee pointed and said the sixth round, and it didn't happen, and Angie does not have the look of a happy man. Goldenberger is going after him. There is irritation on Clay's face and some puzzlement, too. He expected this man to roll over. He was entirely wrong. It was up to Ali to show that he can punch, that he can put a man away. And he hasn't done it tonight. One minute to go in round eight. The eye open again, and the German challenge of fighting, almost as if in a frenzy. open though, not bleeding much. Yeah, he's in trouble. That was that was ruled a knockdown for the mandatory eight count with less than 30 seconds to go in round eight. Teddy Waltham ruled out a knockdown. Although the champion did swing the challenge's body around. It was again a straight right that did it. Again, now bleeding heavily. Well, you saw that at the end of that round, a merciless tumbling as Carl Mildenberger directly above us and squarely in your screen is seated immediately again of the patchwork on the eye. Just a merciless pummeling at the end, felled from the mandatory eight count at about two minutes and 28 seconds into the round. And still, he comes back. He'll be going into the ninth round, and Muhammad Ali was had everything going for him ever since he first felled him in the fifth, the very end of the fifth, and cut that eye, has not yet been able to put Saul Mildenberger out. be back for action the champion awaiting it in three seconds there's the bell for round nine for the killer instinct, for the finish. The man is Joe Lewis. He says he doesn't say. <laughs> Joe, tell him you say. <laughs> well, uh, well, I think that he had him in trouble I think three times during the fight and he don't, he don't show that he can finish him, you know, like... One minute left to go in this round nine, Joe. 
which is beginning to bear a resemblance to the Patterson fight, where he didn't put Patterson away, and later said he could have, but he didn't. surprised at how hard it is for the champion to reopen that cut. The roars of the crowd deceiving because Mildenberger did not really land. Not with any impact. for round 10 coming up right after Wide World of Sports from Waco, Texas, Baylor against Syracuse. We've just been joined as the action for this round begins by Milton Gross, the distinguished syndicated columnist of the New York Post. Milt, quickly, as the fighters fight, your evaluation of the fight thus far, your score. Well, so far to me, how would it have been a shutout? A complete shutout, but there's first man. Knock this man out. That play had the knockout punch. The man is obviously strong and has been hitting him occasionally with jabs. But Clay's hands are so fast, too fast for this man, who's been cut up so badly and is bleeding. Obviously, Clay can hit him at will. Whether or not he can avoid uh, some of Villenberg's punches or something else again. But to me, it's been a shutout this far. You mean you've scored every round for Muhammad Ali? I have. I've scored every round. There were two rounds where I thought Mildenberg was coming on. In the first minute, a minute and a half or so, he's fine. He hurt the Ali. champion then. Milton, he hurts the champion then with that blow to the he belly. Well, now this is the sort of thing we've been seeing, where Clay comes back strong at the end. That was a slip. Just a slip. Whatever and however you score it, Milton, oddly, Mildenberger has been the aggressor for mo many of the moments of this bout. Despite the fact that Clearly, Muhammad Ali is much ahead of him. I would say so. This man, Schnildenberger, fights coming forward. Clay has been fighting from a distance. And the man is obviously as strong as a bull, or else Clay has to not have the knockout punch. That's true. Oh, well, the champion is irritated. I think he's irritated largely with his own frustration. Almost futility and his inability to put Mildenberger away. The eye cut is there to reopen as we have only one minute left of this round. Understandably, the partisan German crowd is going wild because Mildenberger is being aggressive. He is hurt and he is desperate and he is being aggressive. And Ali is irritated and taunted by his own inability to put him away. Look at that. The blood pouring out of the right eye again. Goldenberger has one terrible basic boxing weakness. An open vulnerability above all to the straight right and too often to the straight left. He was knocked down squarely with the straight right. And saved in effect by the mandatory eight count. Not really the best. And certainly Muhammad Ali will be the winner of that round, however rapidly Mildenberg has started. I state that because I refer to the fact that a distinguished American reporter thus far has scored as a shutout. Here's the replay of that knockout, of that knockdown, correction. That was it, the straight right. A terrible, terrible openness to it. And squarely to the eye, a cut below the eye. Once again, if that could have been above the eye, this fight would have been over long ere then. All right, you've seen the replay, and we're back live. Ready for round 11.
Muhammad's going to have a lot of explaining to do after this fight about his punch, about his finishing power. German challenger doesn't have courage, doesn't know courage when he sees it. Now that left is getting into that left eye and has that brutally bleeding. The right eye is still not reopened this round. We're halfway through this. A minute and 15 seconds to go in round 11. No, he didn't hurt him. Those are pawing. It's quite understandable that this crowd should root for their hero. Forty seconds to go in this round, and Muhammad has not done it again. Eddie Wolf from checking that glove and cautioning about backhanding. No backhanding. Telling everybody at ringside, just what we've been telling you, that Mildenberger is so terribly vulnerable to the straight right. It's amazing that the champion hasn't been able to knock him out. Texas, Baylor against Syracuse, the initiation of a great new college football season. You'll see it exclusively on ABC TV. Right got to him again, pushed him back. Fighting on courage and courage alone, Mildenberger is. Now the nose is bleeding. The trade right. Oh, Teddy Waltham is stopping this bout. It's a technical knockout at 1 minute 31, 32 seconds by a clock of the 12th round.